Hello again. Uh, this is the third and the final part of that series regarding the boardwalk wheel. And it's going to be just a bit longer because we're going to be talking about the counter stage, the binary decoder stage, and the Arduino implementation. Even though the Arduino implementation here that I'm showing is not exactly a copy of the boardwalk wheel, but kind of a, a more creative uh, situation of it. Uh, first we start, we go back to the circuit and you will have access to this circuit, obviously. You remember this is the timer stage. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the timer as a clock for this counter. So you see pin three here is connected to the clock input of this counter, 74163. And in this case, every time the output of the timer goes from high to low, then the counter changes the output by incrementing the previous output by one. So for this to work, first of all, you see that pin number one, number seven, number nine, and number 10 are all going to the power supply. And the reason is that we don't want to clear the counter. And you see this bubble here means that a zero will make the clear active. So since we don't want to clear, so we put a high. The same thing with the load. I don't want to load any input. So I want also to be inactive or disabled. So a high again because of this bubble. But these, they don't have bubbles. And that means a high will enable them. And these are enabling inputs for the counter. That means the counter cannot count unless these two are high. So these two are high to enable the counter. This is high to disable the clear, and this is high to disable the load because of the bubbles. And now the outputs, of course, are QD, QC, QB, QA, or you can call them Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0. Just remember that the bottom one at pin 11 is the most significant bit and QA or Q0 at pin 14 is the least significant bit. So before I talk about the next stage, I just want to make sure that I can verify. Remember, we built one stage, we verify. We did that with the LED. Now we're gonna build the counter and we're gonna verify that it works. Then we move on to the next stage. So let's go to the circuit and see that we're doing just that. So the first thing that I have to uh, remind you again, before you connect anything, make sure that the most right bottom pin is connected to ground and the most left top pin is connected to VCC. Not all ICs have this configuration. Some of them will have the VCC and the ground somewhere in the middle, but most ICs will have the, this here ground and this here VCC. And that's what I do with every chip that I use before I, uh, I implement anything. Now, if you remember pin 1, pin, uh, pin, pin 9, 10, and I believe pin 7, which is missing, unfortunately. And, okay, so pin 7 here is also connected to power. Power being the red line, so any red line will do. And of course, you, that's why you use this one here to, to help uh, put the, 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 the wires into, into those holes. And so one, uh, one is power, seven is power, nine is power. Look at 10. I used a very short wire to connect nine to 10. That means now both of them are connected to power. These are useful when you have just to connect two, two columns next to each other, right? They provide exactly the, the right length and they are easy to handle and they should be in your box. Uh, the next one is to say that, remember that pin 11 from the counter, it counts from zero to 15, right? That's why we call it a binary counter, right? A four bit binary counter. And it counts up, right? Uh, and this one counts only up. And so when I connect, 11 to this LED because I want these LEDs to be such that this is the most significant bit and this is the least significant bit and I can read them like this is 3, 4, 5 in binary, 6 in binary and so on, right? So I connected pin 11 
to the left LED and pin 15 to the right LED and of course the others in between, right? 11 to 1, then 12, then 13, then 14, sorry, 14, pin 14 is the one that connects to the most, to the left LED, uh, most right LED, the least significant bit. And so, by putting LEDs, again, anode towards the output, cathode to resistor to ground, right? That's the same implementation like we did here, right? Except we reversed the, 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 the LEDs and the resistor, doesn't really matter. As long as the anode is towards the output of the, the counter, you can see that I can see the binary count and it works perfectly well. So now that I know that it works, I'm going to remove these wires and I'm going to use them to control the binary decoder. Now, what is the purpose of the binary decoder? I mean, not the purpose, I'd say, how does it work so that we can see why it is useful in this circuit? The first thing that I have to show you is, if you look at the uh, binary decoder, you see that pin four and five have bubbles and pin six does not. But four, five, and six are enabling inputs. That means if they do not apply the proper power supply to them, they will not, it will not work as a decoder. And so those bubbles mean that I need a zero to enable this chip, and lack of bubble means I need a high. So I'm gonna put these two to ground, and the third one here to the power supply. Now what makes it a binary decoder? It has this capability of taking an address at the input, which is provided by ABC in this case at least, C being the most significant bit, and so if 0, 0, 0 is applied here, then this output Y0 is going to be low. You see these bubbles? In this case, Y0 is active, that means low. That means all the other outputs are going to be high. That's the way this decoder was built. It's called active low output, right? And if I have 0, 0, 1, now look at this, 0, 0, 1. 1 is at the least significant bit, which means 1, right? So 0, 0, 1, which means 1 in decimal. Y1 is going to be low, and all the rest will be high. And if I have, for example, uh, 0, 1, 1, that's 3. Y3 will be low, and all the other outputs will be, will be high. <laughs> so this is exactly what we want from the board work wheel. We want only one output to be active. So as you see here, four and five uh, from the circuit, they had the bubble and they needed to enable the chip, they need to be connected to ground, and that's what I did here. Six had no bubble, that means a high is provided to enable the chip. And we need the three of them to be at the right potential for this chip to work as needed. Now, how does the binary decoder, again, we really did explain how it worked. So, uh, again, it's powered up, as you see here, power and ground. And so the, the thing that I, and obviously since it only has three bit input, because it only has output, by the way, the number of outputs is equal to two times to the power the number of inputs. And if you remember CBA, those are the inputs, two to the power three is eight, and whenever we need something, whenever we are relate, uh, working with the, an application that requires only one element, like one door open out of eight, one light turned on out of eight, and so on, we think binary decoder, right? Of course, this is one out of eight. Uh, there are other types, two, uh, one out of four, one out of 16, and so on. So it's obvious that I want to, to connect the, least, the three least significant bit of the binary deco of the counter to the, those uh, input ad that input address of the binary decoder, because when you look at the truth table and uh, the instructions will show you in class that if you look at the three bit only the least significant three bits, you will see that the table repeats itself twice. So zero to seven, zero to seven, as if the counter counts from zero to seven. And so in this case, I need uh, the least significant bit which is pin 14 to be connected to A, and A in this case is pin 1. Then I need the next pin, uh, the second more, uh, least significant bit, to pin 
two, I believe. Yes, they are in that order. And then also uh, the last one, which is uh, the three, third pin of the counter to pin three of the decorer. And as you see, in this case, if we have power, right, uh, and I, what is missing here, uh, obviously, is it enabled? Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I Unfortunately, I took the wires from the LEDs, uh, and, and in this case, I connected, oh, here they are. So I needed the wires to connect to the LED, so I need to connect the outputs of the binary decoder. So if you see here, pin 15 is one of the LEDs. So pin 15 is, let's say, choose this one. Obviously, if you do it, it can go one way or the other. Uh, pin 14 to the next LED, and you just keep going. In this case, of course, in this circuit, I did it with uh, only uh, four or five LEDs, only four. But obviously, you can, you can continue the count, and you know there's just a repeat by taking all the outputs and connecting them to the LEDs. In this case, I'm just going to connect four of them, right? Uh, and so what it shows is that it, there are some things that doesn't show, but you see here the light that jumps. Works. Next. And of course, since I didn't connect the other one and the other four, the other four are not connected, that's why you only see when it comes back here after eight seconds, then it, that's exactly what the light should do, right? It's one light at a time. Now, you see here, this is a new component that you see that you haven't used yet. This is a component that has multiple resistors inside. And they all have a common point. They are connected together. So the pins here underneath are, are separate, they're independent, but they're, those resistors are all connected together. The explanation is in the manual, and the instructor can add more. So this is where I go back to the second way, uh, second way that I showed you before on how to turn on an LED, when a low should turn it on. So in this case, that's exactly the case. The output that is active is low, and I want the LED to be on, so I needed to connect the short wire to the output and the anode or the long wire connected to the resistor connected to the power supply as you see here to the power supply obviously this is not the case where you can interchange these two easily because all the the the, the all these par all these uh, parts of the structure need to be connected to the same point, which is 5 volts. And this is the reason I use the resistors as the last stage, because they are already connected together. And so I don't have a choice. I cannot use them independently. So I connected the common point to the power, to the power supply. And by connecting the cathode to the outputs, I allowed the LEDs to be turning on. So. I just wanted to show you a possibility of using the Arduino as a way to implement this circuit, <laughs> except the one that I'm showing you here is a variation. First of all, I selected, in this case, six outputs from the Arduino, pins 2 to pin 7, and then I connected them through resistors and LEDs to ground. As you see here, the, 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 the Arduino for uh, let's say pin two, is connected to this resistor and then connect to this LED to ground. First, uh, for the time being, ignore this part, uh, and that's what I repeat with every other LED, right? From pin two to pin seven for six LEDs. Now, what I what I wanted to show you is is one way. In this case, using this bar graph display, it's a, it's called a ten segment bar graph display. I I uh, I uh, wrote the code. Uh, into the Arduino so that two LEDs at a time separated by one would turn on. So they turn on, then turn on, then turn on, then turn on, and then back again. So instead of like the boardwalk week, which is one at a time, I put two at a time, but separated by one LED in between. So in this case, obviously, uh, you would have to write the code in such a way that this output from the Arduino goes high for one second, 
In this case, it's going to be pin 2 and pin 4 from the Arduino, right, for the first two light LEDs, right? And they turn on, so I keep them on for one second, so that's why the delay for one second. Then I turn them off, and then I turn on pin 3 and pin 5 from the Arduino. I put a high in those pins, and so now it's the next set of two LEDs that turn on. The only problem with this setup, trying to turn on through LEDs and a bar graph, is that the current is not enough from the Arduino to drive the blue LEDs at the same time as this bar graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this bar graph. In fact, I'm just going to remove the wires, right? And as you see already, the blue LED started turning on. Why? Because the current now is enough to drive the LEDs. See here? Two red, two blue, two red, two blue, two red, two blue. And this is just to show you that you can be creative. And of, car of course, you're going to be asked, in addition to the boardwalk week, if you can come up with something that is fun to watch, then please do so. And for all that work, you'll always get some extra credit, whether it's the Arduino implementation of the boardwalk wheel or this creative one. And if you don't get extra points, at least you get the uh, recognition and the.